Okay, my name is Reverend Brian Richards and uh, I'm just in case you've never seen me before and this wonderful uh, establishment we have here, we turned uh, a part of our house into a recording studio so we uh, so we make our videos here and uh, up here you see some of the the work that my uh, wife she Ellenette, puts together this is actually craft work and you'll see she has her own uh, ministry or craft Craft channel. Uh, a craft channel on YouTube. And here we see we have a cross, uh, just to remind us. And here we have a logo, which you cannot read, I guess, but it's called the Faith Restoration Church. Now we are registered as uh, Word of Faith Ministries International as a, uh, a missionary license really to operate in Australia and overseas and we're also registered as a charity so a lot of, not a lot of people know about that so I mentioned that this morning now we come together um, here in Blunt and Sydney and this uh, Apostolic Faith Restoration Church is actually what we call ourselves here but each assembly that we start has different names and uh, so we we have a lot of different names uh, under our registration okay we're going to share this morning on uh, I'm going to share this morning on uh, on prayer on huh? yeah. you know the disciples said to Jesus teach us how to pray because they knew that when he goes up a mountain or something, he comes back with full of the power of the Holy Ghost and they thought, well, how did you do that? We want him to learn how to do it. So, teach us how to pray was the the, uh, the subject of the day. Anyway, we'll start with Joshua. I'm going to introduce my son to you, Joshua. In case you've ever seen Joshua. He comes and he reads for us and he has a a good voice for reading so God is using him it might end up to be a radio announcer one day are you ready Josh? Good. so let's pray first Heavenly Father we thank you Lord that we can come hold to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help at the time of need help us Lord God to move in the anointing and move in your grace in Jesus name Amen. Okay. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Um, I'm going to be reading a few scriptures from Psalms 103. Um, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you're on Vimeo, Daily Motion, or YouTube. After subscribing on YouTube, press the notification bell and you'll be notified of every time we upload a video. Um, you can buy Dad's books at trafficbuilder2.com and there's more books at trafficbuilder3.com. Okay. Psalms 103, King James Version. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that feed him, and his righteousness unto children's children. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art very great, thou art clothed with honour and majesty. Um. 
We worship to the Lord with spirit and truth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. You don't know who I am. My name is Reverend Brian Richards, and we are the Word of Faith Ministries. But right here now at Plumpton, we are the Apostolic Faith Restoration House Church. That's a long title. Okay, we're going to do something about it. But uh, that's who we are during the pandemic uh, restrictions. Uh, there's lots of churches that have moved into the house. You know. That's exactly where the church first started in the book of Acts. I'll actually put the scriptures there with a logo, a beautiful logo there that my wife did. The Faith Restoration Church, Acts uh, 2. 
Acts 2, 41, 46. And uh, so that's where the church started, in the house. The Lord uh, blessed the gathering and the added in one day 3,000 souls. Can you imagine them? I can't. 3,000 souls. How would we get them into the house? We've got some pretty big houses where we live here. Millionaires Row, you know, and uh, in Plumpton. Uh, we're not one of them, but we, you know, we in in the spirit we are. We we're giants in the spirit, and that's 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 where it's where it counts. Uh, all the all your riches and and the money and the big houses you can't take it with you. So, you know. but it's nice to live in a, a big house while you're here, I guess. So. During the pandemic, the church moved into the house again, and so the Lord gave us a, a, a vision that gave me a, an understanding of what He's doing in the Spirit, and what He's doing is um, bringing a restoration of what was originally given to the church. You know, the anointing has left a lot of churches, the anointing of God, you know. Uh, you're saying God is not in our churches? Well, the, it happened before in Scripture you see Hickabok. Hickabok means the glory of the Lord has de departed. And there's a lot of churches that are just doing their, their thing, you know, that they've done for years and years and years. And, uh, and you know, it's a it looks like a form of holiness, but it's now it's now a power there. The power of God is long gone. And so it's just a religious format that they go through. And, uh, you know, I started 1982, uh, two years Bible college and then two years as uh, assistant pastor. And by the time 1990 came, I... Um, I realized that the Lord wanted to use me in a, a different way than what I, I was if I was being a pastor. And so lots of times I would be sharing with people the very things that they need to hear. Uh, and I realized that not necessarily what was going down the flood, the river sort of thing. And I was like a river, I was like a salmon swimming upstream where everybody else is going downstream. So I, I, I realized that I'm not one of the main line denominations. And uh, the more I got filled with the Holy Spirit and experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, the more he was leading me up a stream rather than down a stream, you know. And just like a salmon swimming against the tide, as it were. And, uh, and so, it wasn't long after that I realized that God actually called me out of a seminar and said, you know, I'm all the way from Texas in America. This man was, I won't mention his name, but he said, I'm all the way from Texas and uh, I come here to, to minister at this seminar. And uh, he actually said, in front of everyone, 3,000 people there, he says, you don't need me here with a man like this. I thought, what? And he said, he got the same anointing on him as I have on me. And he was a prophet. He was a known prophet of the day. And uh, I thought, well, and he says, D and he looked at me and he says, you know it there, don't deny it. And there was me, just done through some ministry training. I've already gone through Bible college, but now I went through ministry training where they have different men of God come in and they tell you the, the puddles that you can fall in along the way of ministry. And so um, we learn from other people's mistakes. And then we go out and pioneer a church, make me maybe make a few mistakes that wasn't mentioned, but anyway, the, the fact is, we're being ready to have hands laid on us 
and to be sent out to to do the ministry and uh, he said this man has got the same anointing on him that I have on me I recognize it and, and, and it's up to you what you do about it he said but th that's what I see in this man well I never met this man before and uh, he, he and he said you in your heart you know that's true and I said yes it's true and uh, he said, so why are you going out as a, as a pastor? And I said, because this particular denomination do not recognize anybody else on your pastors. And then later on, they might recognize your gifting, your spiritual gifting as maybe prophet or evangelist or teacher or whatever. But we all get sent out as pastors. And, uh, you know, that was for a Christian Outreach Center, and uh, Christian Outreach Center today is a very big uh, Pentecostal denomination. Uh, and the man that came from Texas was remained <laughs> unnamed, but uh, nevertheless, he what he said was it came to pass and came true. And uh, I realised that I could go into places and speak where there's nothing and speak the divine order, order of God and that something would manifest. And uh, that's been happening and I've been moving in that gift uh, for a long time now. So, this is what I'm saying to the body of Christ, that the Lord is doing a work and he's doing a work like the original foundations like the book of Acts all over again and uh, I mean whew, during Peter's days I mean Peter actually walked I mean this is sometime 14 years or something later after the, the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and um, they went out you know the disciples went out preaching the gospel and there comes Peter and he says that even the shadow of Peter, I mean, he's praying for somebody over here, and the shadow of Peter would heal the sick. Ever heard of that before? No, you see it in the book of Acts, but you know. And you know, there's coming, and it's coming very soon, that this anointing is, is going to be strong like it was then. It'd be the former and latter rain coming down, and there'll be miracles everywhere for well, whosoever shall believe. And so it is coming back. The anointing is coming back to the church and God is doing a restoration. However, if we hold on to our old ideas and we hold on to our own uh, doctrinal you know, we say, oh, we don't do things. I had people say to me, we don't do things like that in our church. We don't believe that way. You know, that we believe if that tongues was passed away with the apostles. And I said, well, it depends what apostle you're following. Because Jesus was the apostle, the original apostle, and he died and rose again from the dead, and he's alive forevermore. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you know, that's uh, <laughs> that's written up on the wall somewhere. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, Hebrews 10 38, something. But anyway, Hebrews 39, I think it is. Uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and what he did before he'll do again, if you believe. And uh, we, 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 um, we, we uh, are teaching this, this coming Tuesday, we have Tuesday um, via Zoom, and we shall be teaching on prayer. You know, the disciples, he said to Jesus, teach us how to pray. Because they knew that he got up in the, in the middle of the, 
sometimes the conversation is to get up and go and pray. You know, where's the Lord? Oh, and so we're there praying. Okay, so you never disturbed him while he's praying. Sometimes he'd go up a mountain all night and come back in the morning when they woke up, and he'd come back in the power of the power of the Holy Spirit, and all kinds of miracles, signs, and wonders would follow him. And um, and he says, these things you shall do. And greater things shall we do, because I go to the Father, and you know He, he left us what with the Word of God, with His the name of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So when God's people pray, they want answers. Yet many Christians don't know how to pray, both effectively, in a way that gets results, and humbly in a way that in light, uh, lines them up with God's will. The prayer of petition known throughout Christian history as the prayer that gets results. The videos that we make can be seen on trafficbuilder3.com It's a, a brand new website. You have to put in the www dot trafficbuilder3.com and then it will work for you and at the end of the right hand side of the website is a little arrow and that arrow represents the YouTube videos you click on there and it opens up all the videos you click on videos itself and it will go back two years of videos so over 150 videos and uh, I was <laughs> You know, I was looking through a few of them myself and I was thinking, that's pretty good. <laughs> you know, and so we've got some pretty good videos there for people to, to see. And um, we're going to give a little, uh, a little test, as it were, for people to know uh, if they can answer these questions. They're all there in the videos. And if they answer a simple, uh, a simple test, we'll give you a certificate to say that we can give you the recognition um, of prior learning and the recognition for you to say that you have studied to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. That's 2 Timothy 2.15. If you'd like one of them certificates, First of all, you have to be on a mailing list. And how you get on the mailing list is by trafficbuilder3.com and you put your name and uh, details there. It just says your name and your details, how we can get in contact with you. We will send you, an, uh, as, as, as about 33 books I've written over the years. And uh, any one of those books you just Tell me which one you would like to read if you're out in the country where you, uh, you know, you, you can't buy the book for whatever reason. Um, we'll send it to you, electronic download, totally free. Just tell me which book you want, and I'll send it to you. And the other mailing list, and we will pray for you. We pray for a mailing list. I pray for my mailing list every day. And when we have words of knowledge and words of prophecy and words to encourage people, I send them uh, an email with our, our latest and greatest whatever is going on at the time. You know. And so lots of people have said that they encourage with our, our ministry, with their videos and with uh, the prayers that we pray and the emails that I send out to them uh, you know, um, Robert Bushby, for instance, over there in, in Kenya, and then he's, he's got other churches in Ghana and in places like that. But uh, he says that, you know, this is very edifying and we really enjoy your ministry because we've never met. But, you know, we've got to know each other in the spirit. And he's a true brother in Christ. And there's many others I could mention that I won't. But um, be an amen this. You're doing good. God will meet you where you're at. 
Okay, so uh, our prayer of petition known as the prayer that gets results. Our videos explore the powerful prayers in detail from many examples found in the Word of God to more recent uh, instances um, of incredible miracle, miracles that have, uh, have come just by us believing. And we've seen people, um, including myself, uh, healed of prostate cancer um, and all kinds of ailments like that. And uh, I remember years ago, you mentioned the word cancer, it's like a swear word it was. <laughs> oh, 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 don't talk like that. You know, <laughs> cancer is around the corner, you can catch anybody and they'll die. And cancer was a, you know, a death sentence. Now, people are being healed of it all over the place. AIDS was a bad thing, you know, and people dying with AIDS. Now they're being healed. You see, God is turning the clock back to the restoration days where people get healed of all kinds of things. And so, you know, I had doctors where I lived before. Doctors have said, we, you're a freak of nature, we don't want to see you anymore. That's because I wouldn't let them operate on me without, you know, me praying and believing God and doing fasting and all those kinds of things, special food. Eventually, the healing comes, you see. Doctors sometimes can be too quick to say that you need an operation. Okay, so we shall give you all the scriptures for the studies of this study. It's called petitioning God for your needs. I want you to write this out like making a contract and put the dates on it, just like making a contract, um, a business contract, you know. And uh, let's start with Psalm uh, 20, Psalm 20 and uh, verses 5 to 9. Uh, now, now know that the Lord, now know that the Lord saves his anointed. It talks about, and it's a song. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, some uh, will remember the name of the Lord our God and trust in him. And so, we have to know that you are anointed by God, but not all the same. Some of more or less degrees of that anointing. What is the anointing? Let's test my son. What is the anointing? The tangible presence of God. The tangible presence of God. Is that right? Elinette? Yes. Elinette's going to come forth in a minute. She's going to give you a few scriptures of her own, talking about the blessing of the Lord. And the Psalm 86, uh, sorry. Psalm 88, sorry, Psalm 28 and verse 6 says, Blessed be the Lord, he has heard my prayers. See that? If you have confidence that he hears your prayers, then you have confidence that your prayers could be answered also. But a lot of people, they pray and they just wonder whether that's right or not. Well, if it's in scripture and you pray scriptures, you'll have more confidence. So pray scriptural prayers and you know that the Lord has heard that because it's written in his word. And the old verses that we heard from the beginning was John 15, 7, that if, if, if my word abides in you and you in me, then you can ask what you will you be done, whatever. You need to believe God for. But you know, you can't believe God until you know that you've got the Word of God in you and you are praying His Word, not your Word, His Word. This is the answers to prayer. 
when you pray the word of God you know you're praying the will of God can you see it? Amen, Amen. Amen. <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> I mean <laughs> we rejoice because the Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant now that doesn't mean just dollars and cents that means whatever you need at the time sometimes a lot of people pray for money when they should be praying for the answer is not money but it's whatever that money can produce you see sometimes I mean even I have my own relatives in in overseas and um, you know they might pray and ask for money when really I ask them what they're going to do with the money and they tell me and I say well that's what we pray for you see it's not always money that you have to pray for it's what the money can do for you that you should be praying for and sometimes it's a need you, you need a television or a fridge or whatever you know or a computer that makes more sense you know you might pray for a laptop for instance or you might pray for a fridge or you might pray you know it's one of your needs and you think you pray for money but you, you know, all the time you should be praying for the thing that you're going to buy with the money you know what I mean and in some cases they're healing doctor's bill electricity bill or whatever it is and so they're thinking you need money for that well praise God you don't need money for that you need prayer for that just by the grace of God this week I'm praying for my power bills not to be heavy you know and uh, we would pray that for a, a while and, and we've learned how to economize and the bills don't go skyrocketing so they pay me now I mean I you know you pay a little bit each fortnight or something and then uh, if you economize then you find that the, the, the bill that you've paid for is you, it's too much so they send your money back you read it praise God so they, I got $500 credit they said they're gonna reimburse me this week you know so that, that's a blessing a blessing of the Lord but it's also answered prayer you see yes, amen. so you know you you don't pray for money to pay for the bill you pay for the bill to be lowered or, or economize somehow you know what I mean and so lots of times we pray for money when you don't have to pray for the need and judge consider now Job Job of all people you know Job 36 11 he says I consider all the years of prosperity see now he was in a a bad situation when he said it but he considered all the years of the good years that he had you know and because he had his eyes fixed on the good times not the bad times then the good times come again out of there God restored to him twice as much as he lost isn't that good why because he, had his fo he turned his focus off the problem onto the good days that he had in the Lord and the Lord restored him we're talking about restoration here and so you know uh, then as Psalm 115 verses 14 and 15 talks about the same thing restoration however some people they think they got a good job and they got their good they got a good income and everything is working out wonderful for them and they says you know these people that they they, they don't go to church they don't need God in their life because they got everything that you know everything that open and shuts everything that they possibly need and they think the last thing they need is to go to church the last thing they need is God well you have a look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18 it says the Lord gives you power to get wealth okay. you think that you get you got the power to get wealth because you've got 
plenty of money in the bank, you've got a nice house and motor car and everything. The Lord's saying that it's He who gives you the power to get that wealth. And the moment you say that it comes by your hands, the Lord will show you that you can take that power off any time you like and let's see how you do it by yourself. And you know, uh, in Galatians 6.10 it says, uh, you do good to others. You know, when you are blessed by God, remember the people that are not so blessed and you bless them. Meet their need and you get blessed again more. In Proverbs 3.9 it says, Honour the Lord with your first fruits of your increase. Uh, and if you don't do that, then eventually it's going to dry up, you know. I mean, I said that, the word of God didn't say it. But it does say at the end of the book of uh, Deuteronomy, it says, serve the Lord with joyfulness, because if you don't, you're going to serve your enemy. Hallelujah. Whatever the enemy is, if it's sadness, or it's grief, or whatever, uh, you know. The enemy, there are lots of enemies we have. And of course, we have one big enemy, and that is Satan. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, it says that the God of this world has blinded the eyes and stopped them from seeing the light, the glorious gospel. This is why not all are saved. This is why it's hard sometimes to get people saved because they cannot see the light that is in the Word. They can't see the glorious gospel. They only see the... and they criticize the church and people of the church, and they, they, they don't see the need that they have. So, if you serve the Lord with joyfulness, because if you don't, it's going to turn into sadness, and you end up serving the enemy. But the God of this world, make no mistake about it, is not Jesus Christ. God loves the world, and he died for us, but the God of this world is the fallen angel of Lucifer, who is now Satan. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, it says, the God of this world has blinded the eyes to stop them from seeing the light, the glorious gospel. And that's not the God we serve. That is the one. That is the enemy. He's the God of the world. All right. So this, this, um, this illustration that I've just been reading from is what we're going to do on our Tuesday night Bible studies. We're going to read through the scriptures. And then after that, uh, we have, and that would be petitioning, in, petitioning God in prayer. And after that, after, directly after we've made like a, like a contract, you know, you write it down, it says in Habakkuk 2, 2, it says write your vision and make it plain. It's not just your vision. Write down your prayers and, and date it and, and you can see uh, that in, in your uh, notes, you wrote a date on it and you, what you believe in God for and straight away you, you go into thank, thanks. Straight after you prayed, after you prayed the petitioning prayer and you've completed and you're satisfied that you've covered all you need, then you go into thanksgiving. Give thanks and praise to God for the answer before you see anything. That is real faith. And uh, so faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. So you haven't seen anything yet. But this is how we do things. So right now I'm going to call my lovely lady. She's going to come and uh, I don't know what she's going to do. <laughs> In Psalms 103, 1, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. 
bless his holy name. Hello Facebook, good noon Australia, and good morning to Philippines. Magandang umaga Philippines. The other Sundays we're talking about grace and today we message today a short message is about blessing that's why we sing bless the Lord O my soul and all within me bless his holy name let us pray Almighty God thank you for all the blessings that you have given to us may your Holy Spirit guide us in Jesus name Amen I'm learning what is the difference between grace and blessing because our thought it's the same meaning before. Remember grace is unmerited free gift from God. It is given to us even we don't, we don't deserve it. It's God's favor. In Visaya language, ang gracia libre nga gasa, gihatag niya, bisan dilita ang ngayon tagaan. Pero tungkol siyang gugmaw kaluoy iyang gihata because of His love and mercy, the grace He's given to us. What is blessing? Unsang panalangin? The blessing is something we get when we are our hearts right with God, when we practice righteousness with other people. Blessing is merited. Given this blessing, the people deserve to be blessed. So there's a difference between them. It's a given to a person who are kind, generous, friendly, or a truly Christian. You know, I felt blessed with this during lockdown in pandemic time. I never have any fear in my life because that's a blessing. God gave me a blessing to not to be fear because He's not giving us a spirit of fear, but the power, love, and sound of mind. How to earn blessing? When we avoid to commit sin, when the temptation comes, rebuke it and ask forgiveness in our sin and we don't sin no more. There are two types of blessing. Physical blessing, the provision of God. He give us food to eat and drink. Water is very important in our lives. Shelter so we can maintain safe and secure life. He created beautiful creatures, trees, plants, vegetables, fruits, so that we can survive to live on this earth. And that is physical blessing. Water, food is life. What do you think life would be without water and food? Do you think we can survive? No, it's not. We cannot survive with, without water and Food. Do you think without God in our lives we can survive? No. We need Jesus in our lives to survive. Life is meaningless without Him. He is the only one give us wealth, strength, knowledge of wisdom. Do you think we can be able to do a job without strength? In order to survive, to live, we need money, isn't it? Money is very important in order to live. But it says in the Bible, in 1 Timothy 6.10, it says, Money is a root of evil. It's all kinds of evil. Not money itself, but the love of money. Money can give us the power to make difference in the lives of others. So we use your money wisely, use in a right motivation. God give us shelter. In Psalms 91.1 it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. We should never get tired of saying, Thank you, Lord, because He never get tired of blessing in us every day. God is our hope. You know, 
He bless us. He is our strength. There is no one else for me. But Jesus is the one who gives us everything. Let's pray. God, thank you for the blessings that you pour out in our lives. Physically, spiritually, material things, and the huge blessing that we still alive. Thank you, Lord. Don't take for granted for all this blessing that God has given to us. Our hope is in Him. Our strength is in Him. There is no one else for me but none but Jesus. I would like to sing a song, None But Jesus. In the quiet, in the stillness, I know that you are God in the secret of your presence I know there I am restored when you call I won't refuse It's your day I can I choose There is no one else for me Done but Jesus Crucified to set me free. Now I live to bring him praise. In the chaos, in confusion, I know your sovereign still. In the moment of my weakness, you gave me grace to do your will. So when you call, I won't delay. This my song. Oh, my delight is in you, Lord. 
all of my strength. There is no one else for me None but Jesus Crucified to set me free Now I live to bring Him praise Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is this good? Praise God. This is my wife, Eleanor Richards. You can see her on the YouTube. And uh, so we're going to close. In a few minutes, I just wanted to share with you a scripture in John 10, 15. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and the voice of a stranger will not follow. Some translations, they say, My sheep know my voice, and the voice of a stranger that will not follow. John 10, and verses 5 to 27 talks about Jesus saying that my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger that will not follow. But other translations say my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger that will not follow. And, uh, you know, I just thought that it's just a way of expressing the word of God, but no. I realize now everybody has the opportunity to hear that voice. Not everybody hears the voice because they shut it out with so many other things, with the noise of the world, with the, maybe the, the things that we do wrong. They shut out the voice of God. So we left with the inner witness, the convictions of the Holy Spirit. And denominational teaching I received when I was a boy, you know, I was, when I was a young boy, I was, I was in a mainline denomination. And uh, we'd often hear about the strong man, you know. In Luke 11 and verse 21, talks about the strong man, unless you bind the strong man, you're going to, you know, spoil his goods. And it was always preached to us and taught to us that the strong man was taught about the devil or, you know, Satan. And uh, we don't see it that way now. The strong man that Jesus is talking about is you. And me. And uh, what happens is Satan, who is the, the god of this world, he comes to rob, kill, and destroy, and he, he does it by deception. You, a little bit of deception until you're fully deceived into thinking that he's the strong man, not you. But you know, if he deceives you and you become bound, now what is binding and loosing? It talks about the Bible, it talks about whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And that binding is like um, getting two pens together and bind something around, hold them together, you know. And so what happens is, unless you bind the strong man, unless you put a pair of handcuffs on me, you can't assault me, you know what I mean? So you, if you're bound, your arms, you, you, you're bound, you can't defend yourself. 
you see? And Satan becomes a stronghold, strong, the strong man. But God made you the strong man. You are, greater is he that is in you than he that is of the world. 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he within you than he that is of the world. You fear no evil, for the Lord God is with you. And he says, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. See, you have got the power in Jesus' name to bind any you bind anything. And you, you are the strong man. But if Satan comes and deceives you, he becomes this strong man, you see. So make no mistake about it. We have power over principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. In Jesus' name, we render them harmless and ineffective against us in the mighty name of Jesus. And that spiritual blindness that is on people that are listening to me right now, I take authority over that spiritual blindness. I command it to loose you in Jesus' name. Jesus said to the woman that was buried over 38 years, he says, aren't you a daughter of Abraham? She said, yes, I am. He says, shouldn't you be loosed then? She says, yes. He said, be loosed. He didn't say, I bind you. He said, be loosed. So the loosing belongs to us. We should be loosed from every infirmity, every sickness, every disease. Be loosed in Jesus' name. And Satan comes and binds you up then you, you've got the infirmity. You bind that infirmity to you. And it's not God that makes you sick. It's the devil that deceives you, thinking that, you know, people that say, oh, my sugar diabetes, my arthritis, my this, it's not yours. It's the devil that's stuck it on you. And you, if, as long as you keep saying it's yours, you'll never get rid of it. It's not yours. God didn't give it you. It's the devil who gave it you. And so you wake up to the fact that you should be loosed. In Jesus' name, be loosed now. Every sickness, every disease, be loosed in Jesus' name. And if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, make Jesus Lord over your sicknesses, make Jesus Lord over your financials, Make Jesus Lord over your life. If you've never done that, today is the day of salvation. Please, say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe Jesus died for me. And rose again from the dead. And rose again from the dead. I ask him to be my Lord. I ask you to be my Lord. To be my Savior. To be my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my sin. And make me born again. And make me born again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now if you said that prayer for the first time, or maybe you said that prayer and it's been a long time. I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to bless you with one of our books. I'd like to bless you my by being on our prayer, prayer mailing list. You get a lot of things that we give. Forever. But the greatest Order thing we can give is our time in prayer. Heroes, the and the miracles will happen in your life. Jesus Please, we don't have our mailing list. We'll leave you now. Father, I pray that this word would go forth with power and authority in Jesus' name. Amen.